All right, April, it's all yours. Hey everyone. <laughs> so um our lesson is day two, alert to the enemy on page 118. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and get started um, in the fir on the first um, paragraph it reads victorious living involves being aware of Satan's potential hold on you and keeping the enemy at a distance. Even though the human personality and God's highest crea is God's highest creation, an individual's personality is damaged when he or she follows Satan and chooses to sin. Satan's weapons are powerful. Only a foolish Christian fails to take Satan seriously. So, um, <clears throat> we want to start out the let us start out the lesson with the definition of alert. Um, day two, alert to the enemy. Um, the next slide. Okay. Definition of alert. To quickly, quick to notice any unusual and potentially dangerous or difficult circumstances. The state of being watchful for possible danger. So um, what that tells us, us is as, as believers, we know we know who the enemy is. We know how he operates at this point in our Bible study lesson. We're clear on that. Um, but this lesson is focused on um, how important it is to be alert, to be watchful, mindful of the enemy and how he strategizes um, in our lives as believers and non-believers. So um, <clears throat> under the forces you face, there are three scriptures, um, Galatians 5, 17, 1 John 2, verse 15, and then 1 Peter 5 and 8. Okay. I'm going to get it. Um, Angela, please read that first scripture. All right. Um, Galatians 5 and 17. It's, a, it's in you guys on the left side of the module. The sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. And contrary just means that it's the opposite. Your sinful nature is always going to go against the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is what the Holy Ghost, which is guide us into all truth. So, to be aware of that, in order to be led by the Spirit, you have to be connected. In order to be connected with the Spirit, you have to spend some time with God. You have to. That's very important. You have to read His Word. You have to meditate on it day and night. You have to feed the spirit. If you feed the spirit, then it will weaken the flesh. You, speak, you feed the spirit by eating the word, which the word is God. Just like in our natural body, that you have to eat in order to have your strength. And that is the same thing with the spirit. So if they're going against each other, then your spirit man will be stronger. Then your sinful man. Amen. Um, I'm gonna read first John two fifteen. Do not may love I, may I add something to that? Yes. Yes. And I love the way you, you phrased that about feeding the spirit. Man, but it, it led me to one thing that I do remember that even though we feed that spirit to get it stronger, that does not stop that flesh from trying to bulk up. And, and we have well, to always remember that he's still gonna come back. And, but, but we must continue to feed that spirit. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have a comment? Okay. All right. We're going to move on to 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Um, in other words, don't put anything before God. Um, Amen. Material things, there's nothing wrong with having them, but you have to prioritize. You have to know what is top priority, and that is relationship with God above all, all things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read that last verse. Um, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's, again, self-explanatory. That is, that is what he was created to do, and he does a fantastic job at it. So we have to make sure that we do our part in putting the enemy where he needs to be, where he was ordained to be. Um, God has given us victory over the enemy. Um, so we just have to walk in that. Okay. Anybody have any comments on that scripture? Yes, I like that. Okay. Was well, somebody going to say something? Oh, go ahead. I just want to say, and with that staying alert, it, it, it brings me to the point where is that if someone says to me that they're going to kill me, I'm not going to let them get close to me. Mm. But if they're what? smiling in my face and they got the knife you know, hid in their back pocket and they're smiling and they're trying to get close to you, so you, you have to, again, be alert. for When they go to reach for it, you can respond. And so that's yeah. the way the enemy is. He's not going to just come out and tell you, I'm going to take you out. You know, He's waiting for a little opportunity for you to get a little weak on this one little item. And he's speaking, and you know, how the scripture talk about it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Yes. And so those little things that we are, well, that'll be all right. We got to be mindful of that, alert of that also, because that's the enemy at work. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to add something about watchful. Um, once the enemy study us, it watches us. That's why the enemy know what make us tick, what make us angry. They, the enemy watches us to see our responses on how we handle things. He's on his job. He watches us. So we have to pay attention to him. We have to watch his craftiness. Remember how they say that the enemy don't have no new tricks? He's having the same tricks that come around different ways to use those same tricks. And we need to study his attributes. We need to be watchful. And the only way that we will be watchful is we are alert and diligent in the word and connected and have the spiritual eyes that we be able to see your ears that we be able to hear that all our senses are are used in the spirit realm so when we are alert we will be able to see the tricks of the enemy right amen, amen. Right. And to add on to that, so the, in the, the way that we can stay alert and be aware of the enemy and how he moves and how he strategize, strategizes is we have to have and operate under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have to have it. There is no other way. So um, thank you, Mr. Will, and thank you, Angela. Um, so if we move down, um, you can go to the next slide, Sean. Okay, our scripture references will be um, strategically throughout the lesson. I did um, take the liberty of uh, assigning these scriptures. They were, it's based on the people who volunteer to read normally. So if you don't volunteer, you're probably not, <laughs> I probably did assign, <laughs> assign you a, a scripture as I don't volunteer to read very often either. So I understand. However, um, Tanya, do you mind reading um, the first the first uh, um, Romans 8 and 3? Again, when we get to these scriptures is when you're reading them. You won't necessarily read them right now. But that's Tanya, Romans 8 and 3. Can I get an okay from each one of you so I know you have it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, John 16, 33 is going to be Ms. Kathy, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, first John three and eight. It's a man bone. Here with me, but she's not. Okay, okay. Um okay, Miss Paula, do you mind reading first John three and eight?
I'm having trouble waving in and out with my, I don't know what's going on with me tonight. So. Okay. 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 Yeah, I might break up. Okay. Um, so let me get first John three and eight, just because, um, you kind of in and out Ms. Fowler. Um, Toya, do you mind reading that one? Toya then? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's first John three and eight. And then first Peter five and eight is Nadine on. I can't see y'all. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Here. Okay, fantastic. Please read First Peter five and eight, and then Job, first okay. chapter six through twelve. Uh, Candace, I know you said you're uh you have a pulled something, so you're iced up. But are you able to read or no? Yes. Okay, great. Read. I'm gonna get you to read Job one six through twelve. And then, um, Mr. Willie, if you would find John 15. Where was it? Oh, um, Candace, it was Job 1, verses 6 through 12. Thank you. Uh -huh. And then, uh, John, uh, Mr. Willie, John 15, verses 15 through 20. Yes. Okay, so again, throughout the, um, the lesson, uh, I'll, I have the, um, I'll let you know in which place you would uh, read or share that scripture, okay? Um, so we're going to go into the scenarios. At the bottom of the page, we start with Julie. Um, Julie badly needed a job because she was the sole provider for her, herself and her son. Although she had taken court, um, courses to update her skills and had sought to help an unemployment agency, she was still unemployed. After a six month search, her bank account was drained, her financial picture looked bleak. Julie or uh, Kristen had trusted God with her job search, but was beginning to doubt that God was aware of her disgrace. Okay. Um so we're gonna just read through these scenarios and then we're gonna um Get some feedback on each um, situation and how that spoke to you. Um, so I'll read the next one. Ken, a middle-aged father of three, was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. At first, he vowed at fighting this disease, he vowed that fighting this disease would not get him down. But the treatments and his discomfort were taking an emotional and physical toll. The time away from work because of the illness was endangering his job. Having served God faithfully as a Sunday school teacher for years, Ken wondered why God did not intervene. Okay. Ray had worked digitally in his business and was successful. As his income increased, he acquired a larger home, a finer car, and numerous material possessions. Mater yeah, possessions. Ray had always been active in his church, but his increased travel schedule, as well as his heightened interest in leisure activities, began taking more of his time. Soon, he began to tell himself that he did not have time for church because he was such a busy, important man. Okay. So um, the scenario with Julie is pretty much um, cut and dry. You know, she she it seems like to me she did what she needed to do in order to acquire a job. She put in um she got her courses updated. Um she sought the help of a employment agency. You know, she I'm sure went on interviews, you know, just did everything she needed to do to make sure that she was in proper position to obtain a job. And she did this for six months. Okay. Um, but what did what Julie did, and it doesn't specify, but what Julie did as a Christian, the things that they mentioned here is she trusted God with her job search and she began to doubt. So um, what stood out to me in her scenario and raised is the depletion of the natural need that Julie and Ken needed seemed to ex be exaggerated over the spiritual need. That's a strategy of the enemy. He takes what we see to discourage us. 
Um, yep. Once her money started running out money, I'm sure that she saved up or maybe got um, from a from her job settlement or whatever case may be, when that money started looking funny, then she had began to refocus and, you know, doubt God's awareness. But at the time when I was studying the lesson and I was um, thinking about scripture, first scripture I thought about was, well, faith without works is dead, right? So in that scenario, Julie, she did the work, you know? Um, but the Holy Spirit asked me, but what is works without faith? And that's what brought it in perspective as far as Julie. So when we hear that scripture, we have to recognize that faith without works is dead, but so is works without faith. It's the same yeah. result. So, um, so yeah, that that is what stood out to me. You know, the enemy likes to use our personal physical natural experiences and different things that we see to discourage us to make us second guess our faith to make us question well is god even aware of what's going on you know um right. so a lot of times we like to or i sometimes take my natural experience and separate it from god because god is a spirit so he i i don't in the, in certain situations i have to remind myself he he was made flesh through christ so he is able to identify with our natural experience by the grace of god so um did anybody else have anything they wanted to share concerning um julie ken or ray because we haven't said much about ray what do y'all think about ray's experience as far as him being a successful businessman he got his money he got his cars he got his fancy house so he's not suffering anything in the natural he he has everything he needs in the natural, but l let me get some feedback on Ray's situation. What do y'all think? Ray got too big and he um put everything before God. Absolutely. Ray Ray's worshiping uh, worldly things instead of God. I was gonna say it gets it can be easy to get busy. You know what yep. I mean? Um, just like, you know, you got work and you got to come home and do this and go to games. Um, you know, all of these different responsibilities that we have. Um, so it's easy to get distracted, easy to get busy. But you I mean, you have to, you know, train yourself to be focused, making sure you're getting on Bible study, making sure you're taking the time to get into your word and, you know, right. go to church and things like that. But I can see, you know, <clears throat> there's been times where I'm like, oh, snap, I haven't like done my morning, you know, Bible reading. You know, I'm not praying as much because I'm you, I'm getting so busy with all of the other things. So I can see naturally how that can. Sorry, y'all. I can see how naturally that could be easy. It's easy for that to happen. That's all. So I can right. relate. But it's right. just about training yourself and knowing better. Right. 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 And uh, I want to tell the difference you. With Ray. Go ahead. You go ahead. Um, the difference with Ray, it says in here that he didn't have time for church because he was so busy and important. Ray started thinking more highly of him. Yeah, he than said. He ought to. Yeah. Um, he started thinking more highly of himself because he's too busy and he's important. So he said he made a conscious decision to say, I don't have time for God. Right. Because now I'm important because look at all the things that I have obtained in life. Right. That's, yeah. That's good. And I would say to anyone out there that have been on Julie's side or is on Julie circus situation right now that if you're looking for a job, sometimes it can get discouraged when you don't have it. But I remember when I lost my job back in 2019, and I went, went lost, it's like over half of the income that was lost in the house where the bill steady was going. So I was looking for jobs. Some was telling me I was overqualified, haven't heard from a lot of people. So you'll start getting discouraged. And I remember, 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, if they didn't call you back, then that's not the job I have for you. Mm. That door will be closed. Mm. And the job that I have for you, it will be open. And he said, I have the set appointed time when you will move into that job, when you go to your next job. Wow. But he knew how to take care of me in the process. He still took care of me. I, I never missed a beat. I never missed anything. The bills got paid for why? Because he said he will give men to bless you. When you're in a circumstance, you don't have to go and ask. God put people on, on your heart and say, hey, go do this for so-and-so. And you never will know their situation because that's what he do. He know how to take care of us better than we can. So when mm -hmm. I start, I had to renew my mind. I said, okay, yes, Lord, you're right. So if the job don't come up, so that'll keep, keep me from being discouraged, I know that's, that's not the job for me. And so for anybody who's in that situation, if that if you seem like it, if that door's not opening, that's not the job. Just continue waiting patiently to God open that door for you. Amen. 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 May I, may I talk on Julie also? Hello? Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. As uh the reading by Julie, uh one of the first persons that came to my mind was John. Uh, John walked with Jesus. He was had a personal relationship there. And then things started happening to John. And now he's in prison, per se. And he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one or should we look for another? Because at that point, he was beginning to doubt his walk with, with Jesus. But Jesus told him, told the disciples, go back and tell John, you know, about the things that they were seeing, because these are the same things that he had already told John that was going to happen. So in our walk with God, there are going to be some tough times. He said that there are going to be some persecution, and it's not uh, it's not fun, i put it that way. But in, in that, we have to stay focused, because like uh, uh, she said that uh, God got a plan, but he knows, he knows what you need more than you know yourself. And, and so with that being said, they're going to come sometimes possible that a doubt will come, but you have to hold on. Amen. Amen. So um, on the next, in the, we're going to move into the next part of our um, lesson. So I'm, I like visuals. Uh, I don't know how many was at my, was at the last, last uh, lesson we taught, but I used a, a video then. Um, I just like to, the visual is just something, it does something for me. You can, you can kind of connect with character. It's just a great way to kind of plug into, plug scripture into, into life experiences. So, um, these clips that are coming up next, um, if you would, I'm going to, um, allow these clips to play and whatever the Holy Spirit gives you concerning that in particular scripture, please write it down, make a little note of it. Um, it's going to um, show us just the different dynamics of um, the enemy and how he comes in and how, you know, uh, he discourages us and uses situations. And, you know, it, it, everything is according to our measure of faith regarding what God allows the enemy to do. He can't do anything more than what God allows. So mm -hmm. while we're watching the clips, if God gives you something that you want to share, um, just jot it down um, because I'm going to pause after a couple of them, but they're going to pretty much play consistent. Um, but I do definitely want to leave time for feedback and dialogue. And so that is where your your uh, the things that you jotted down will come into play. So don't feel like you won't get a chance to say it. You will. But I just want to um, make sure that um, we can get get all of what what uh, what uh, this is about. So these clips are from, I don't know how many have seen the movie, but there's a movie called To Hell and Back. It is a um, modern day Job experience, but the, the main character in this in particular movie's name is Joe. So um, it basically, we all know the Job experience. We know what God allowed the enemy to do with Job. Um, so it goes from one extreme to the next. It's a lot that's not 
shown. So hopefully at the end of this, you'll feel inspired to watch it because this is an absolutely amazing movie. Um, but for right now, um, I'm gonna we're gonna play <laughs> these different scenes and just take a moment, take it in, um, and just allow yourself to to um, just think about the alert to the enemy. You can even think about back when Pastor was talking about the fruits of the spirit. Um, all of those things, just in what ways do these different situations and scenarios allows the Holy Spirit to work and cultivate those fruits of the spirit? Um, more than half of the time, the fruits of the spirit are not cultivated when it feels good. So um, gentleness, the cultivation, the cultivation process is when you're not being handled so gentle. So just keep that in mind. Um, and uh, yeah, so Sean, if you would. <laughs> Yeah, Satan, have you considered my servant, Joe? There's no one on the planet like him. He's a good man. He's blameless, God-fearing, and he despises evil. Well, of course he is. You've given him a fortune, great health, and a privileged life. But I bet if you took all those things away from him, he will curse you to your face. Very well, Satan. He's in your hands. Do whatever you please to his possessions and to his family. But do not lay one finger on him. Not one finger. Are we clear? Oh, Crystal. He will not suffer so much as a paper cut. Go to the next one, April. Yes. So on this one, this is not necessarily a scene, but it does. Um, I just wanted to introduce to you. This is Joe, Joe's Joe's family. Um, so he has two daughters, three sons. The one behind the mother in the brown, that's his daughter-in-law, and he has been selected as Man of the Year. Um, he gave his speech, and he's just talking about how the glory of God is just amazing and has brought multiple bountiful blessings into his life. He is a very successful businessman. He loves his family. And so I just want to everyone to take in the picture of Job before the enemy was granted access. You can go to the next one. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here, son. I'm right here. Okay? It's gonna be all right. You know, God, God is gonna take care of you. God's gonna take care of you just like, just like he's always, he's always taking care of you. Okay? Son, you're gonna be just, you're gonna be just fine. It's fine. No, 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 just, just hold on, son. I love you. Baby, I love you so, so, so much. And, and son, I promise God it. shepherd and I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters he restoreth my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness are for we his supposed names. to hear what they're saying or not and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death okay, I will yeah. fear um can you pause it, Sean? Yes. Yes, are, are you not hearing any of it? I'm not. I oh. don't know. 
It might be my computer. You have to go no, to the I'm presentation not. screen. So if you can see a lot of people, you need to swipe over just to the presentation screen where you just see the speakers in the um, video. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you see it? You get it, Mama D? No, but it's all right. Because, you know, I don't see that on my computer. I'm good. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. All right. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. What, man? What you want? What happened to you, KJ? What caused you to turn away from God? Come on, man. You walk into a space that was supposed to be a safe haven, a place for boys just like you. You gunned my son down in cold blood. <laughs> and for what? A laptop? and a handful of trinkets. And now you want to stand in here all tough like you don't care. Acting like my pain doesn't matter. Well, it matters, KJ. My son, he mattered. So whether you like it or not, you're going to sit your narrow behind down and you're going to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Sit down! You want to know what I see? Every night when I close my eyes, my son, laying in his own blood, mm. gasping for life, I can't erase that picture from my mind. And I, I can't stop blaming myself for what happened to him. That kind of pain is hard to live with, KJ. It's going to be hard for you, too, unless you turn your life around. <laughs> turn my life around? I'm about to go to prison. Probably for the rest of my life for killing your little punk ass son. I'm gonna turn my life around. I can't say what'll happen in court. But what I can do is I can pray for you. And I can forgive you. Man, you gotta be kidding me, man. What? You don't think it's possible? I don't think it's normal. Matthew 6, 14. Man, come on, man. <laughs> If you forgive me, who sinned against you? Forgive me? You gonna forgive me? A second ago, you looked like you wanted to crack my skull in. Now you gonna get all religious and talk about forgiveness. I killed your son! Mm. You forgive somebody for that. I never said it was easy.
Okay. So right now I want to insert that scripture. Um, Nadine, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Can you read that scripture for us, please? Be sober, be vigilant, because you're ever seen with the devil as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Thank you. So um, a translation for being sober. A translation for being sober um, is be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. So um, I just wanted to point out um, that self-control is definitely one of the fruits of the spirit that was in cultivation process in Joe on this um, in particular in particular scene um yeah i i don't i guess it, it really depends on where you are yeah your level of spirituality the level where you are in christ to be able to forgive and be able to think about somebody else's soul when that person have really took wow. your son life so it's showing that we may not, that's what you call that peace that surpasses understanding, even though he's going through the pain of it, but his heart still is after this child of being saved. So he won't go. And why he's why the guy's acting like he's acting because he don't even forgive himself. He don't forgive himself. That's why he was saying, Well, hey, I killed your son. Who go forgive that? So that lets you know that God is always be dealing with you on your actions and what you have done, but he don't know which way to go. He don't he don't know where to go. Only thing he's thinking about, he going to prison. Only thing he's thinking about is his self at this moment. His he he's really thinking about himself. So it shows we don't know what. We were doing a situation of uh, knowing when our fruits go show up until that situation happened on how we handle it. And he and Joe really harmonious meekness. He showed forth the fruit through his hurt. He pushed back the pain. So that's the question. We don't know. We normally ask sometimes, what would we do? Where we at now? In the in the level of spirituality we act now what would you have done so that's a good question i would answer um i don't think i would have handled the situation anything similar to joe <laughs> um that was a lot um but again you know god allows you know the things that we can handle you know and, and my favorite line in this scene was he didn't say it was going to be easy um so that's something to think about and again we talked about the fruits that's developed and cultivated just in this scene um so um we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next slide or if anybody wants to say anything about this one okay you can go to the next one Sean. Honey, wake up. Phoebe, Colleen! Colleen! For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God, it is wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister. We therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> Come on, God. He's lost his fortune, two of his beloved offspring, and now everyone is going to turn their backs on him. And when they do, he will definitely turn his back on you. Are you sure about that? I bet his life on it. You'll see. Do you realize what this means? It's all gone. I understand, Gary. 
I'm saying you've lost everything. Everything. <sighs> then we'll start over. We'll build everything up again, brick by brick. Those who want to stay can stay. Those who want to leave can leave. With God's help, we will rebuild it all. What's gonna happen to us? Well, I, I guess we just gonna have to figure it out. With what? I mean, by the time these people are done with us, all we're gonna have is the clothes on our backs. Well, we started out with the clothes on our backs, Queen. God bless oh, us, too. bless. Oh, is this what you call a blessing? You know, all you do is pray and pray, and, and this is the blessing that you get from God? Well, please forgive me for not falling to my knees and giving thanks for this wonderful blessing, because all I see around me is pain and, and suffering and death. Where's the blessing, Joe? I didn't hear you complaining before. Baby, are we just supposed to accept the good and not the bad? Honey, sweetheart. I'm doing everything I can to hold this family together, and I need you to trust me. I need you to help me, Colleen. Isn't that what you have God for? Mm. Jason, what happened? Well, the uh, doctor will be out in a minute. Where, what, what's the doctor saying? Look, all I know is he was involved in a head-on collision. A woman was driving his car, one of his girlfriends, I guess, but she, she didn't make it. What is the doctor saying about Jason? I mean, is he going Mr. To... Patterson? Jason has sustained severe injury to his spinal cord. It's too early to say whether the damage will be permanent, but you should be prepared. But he's alive. Yes, he's alive. Is he going to be paralyzed? That's a possibility. <gasps> Can we see him? He's asleep. Give him some time. He's pretty banged up, but wow. it could have been a lot worse. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just got your message. Oh, sweetie, it's okay. It's okay. Look, um, Jason has been injured, but uh, thank goodness he's, he's, he's going to pull through. Hi. Um... We came to your house, but It's okay. I appreciate you coming by, but uh, my son, he's, uh... He's gonna be okay. Any news on Abby? Oh, you know what? I forgot to call her. She, um, she said she was going to the mall with some friends. So... Um, <sighs> she called me to come and get her, Mom, but I was here with little Aaron, so she called Jason. Abby was with Jason. Where is she? The young lady in the car with my son. She's my daughter. Where is she? Oh, my God. Where is she? With the girl who was in the car with my son. Where is she? Where is she? Come on, God. Where is she? Colleen, listen Joe, to me. No, listen to me, late. honey. No, I'm not Joe. Thinking. Colleen, no, Joe. Listen. Colleen. Joe, I can't take it anymore. You're not thinking straight. 
Listen, you just need to get help. This is what's talking. There's nothing wrong with me. It's all about you. No, you, 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 Honey. Colleen. Bye. Colleen. Any man will give all that he has for his own life. Take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. Very well, Satan. Have your way with Joe. But you are not allowed to take his life. You know, for as long as I've known you, Joe, you've been a stand-up guy. Helping people, going to church, always trying to do the right thing. But I gotta tell you, all this uh, stuff, you know, it's pretty weird. I mean, I'm not a, you know, theological expert, not like you. But it seems to me that if you know, God allows someone to suffer as much as you've suffered, uh, uh, it must have a reason. You know, no offense, Joe, but I've been kind of thinking the same thing. Why do you think God's so ticked off with you? It certainly does appear that God has abandoned me. <laughs> I'm torn in his wrath, and he hated me. And you believe it's because of something that I've done? You two, you know me better than anyone. You know how I live my life. Oh, true, but we only you know what we see. Joe. The guy upstairs, he sees everything. Right? Maybe he caught a glimpse of you doing something you shouldn't have. I'm just asking. I don't know what you two think I've done or why you believe this is some form of retribution. No, but... oh, come on, Joe. What else could it be? I mean, why else would good old righteous Joe Patterson suffer like a common sinner? That's a good question, Lance. Yeah, it is. How about an answer? Actually, I'd like one myself. Hey, you know what? One day you'll get to ask the big guy himself. You know, Uncle Lance, you guys have a pretty interesting take on all of this, but uh, I think I need to check you on a couple things. <laughs> you too, Dad. You look back on everything that's happened to my father and my family. And you're 100% sure he's being punished. In fact, you guys seem to kind of like the idea of seeing Mr. Holier Than Thou, Joe Patterson, meet the wrath of a vengeful God. And Dad, you're wondering why me? Why is God making me suffer? After all, you are. God's prized pupil and you, Joseph Patterson, have been more righteous than anyone. But are you more righteous than God? Why you, Dad? Why not you? Did it ever occur to you, to, to any of you, that suffering is a blessing? <laughs> that it actually has some sort of divine purpose to it? That sometimes the big guy chooses to show us his power through pain? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Dad, I, I remember you telling us the story of the blind man. You remember that? Uh. Jesus' disciples saw the blind man, and right away they assumed he was blind because he or his parents were sinners. And Jesus told them nobody had sinned. He said the man was blind so that, so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So I guess it just proves, fellas, it ain't always the blind who can't see. And sometimes we see and we simply choose to look away. <laughs> Very nice, Jason. Very nice. But well, I always thought you were the one of all of Joe's children who didn't swallow all those pious lectures he shoved down your throat. Nonetheless, he is not blind Bartimaeus or whoever he is. No, no. 
He's not, Uncle Lance. You're right. But he is Job. A righteous man. A loving father. Yeah, maybe a little obsessive. But loving. Honorable and good. A faithful servant who suffers for no apparent reason except for the fact that old Satan just wants him to curse God. A man who lost his wealth, his reputation, his health. And three of his children, my brother and sisters. But my father never lost his faith. Never. All this time, I thought you weren't listening. And all these years, I thought you were. Okay, um, so really quickly, um, I know, I know it is eight o'clock right now, but I do want some feedback. If anybody wants to share, um, how, how, in what ways did that, uh, did those different scenes, it, you don't have to give a, a full detail because I, I didn't realize it's almost eight, but um, does anybody have any feedback, anything that God may have shared with you in one of the scenes or anything that you want to share regarding the alert of the enemy and how Job handled this situation. I know all of us have been in one place or the other at separate times and different and years or months might go by and you're still trying to get over a loss of a loved one or, you know, trying to look for a job or, or you know, you lost your job, whatever the case may be, we're all affected in some way or another. Um, but with this situation, all of this happened in a short time frame. So it took some real faith um, on Job um, from Job's perspective. But anybody has anything they want to share regarding um, the slides, the movie? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> throughout the throughout everything that he was dealing with with um, with his 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 wealth and everything and his prosperity. Um, he started losing things, you know, he's lost his family, he lost his company, business, or whatever the case may be. And the whole entire time, he remained steadfast and kept his faith throughout all of it while his, in the, while his wife was trying to, um, you know, make him lose faith or whatever by saying, hey, you know, you got God to do this. That was the trick of the enemy to try to get him to curse. Um... His brother was trying to do the same thing. Like, hey, man, you so righteous. And why all of a sudden, why are you so sick now? You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and another thing I got out of it, I, I'm all over the place with it. But I'm excited about it. He didn't think his son was listening to him. Exactly. I was teaching him. And his son was listening. And then he his son taught him something. So that's what I got out all of it. Um, I never seen this movie. Now we're going to have to watch the movie now. Yes. So that's what I got out of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, anybody else? Um, I, I, I just want to say something um, that he didn't mention. Um, and that's in comparison to what we went through uh, a few years back uh, when um, I was sick. Mm -hmm. And he was calling the hospital. I, I, I hear these stories later. And um, he was calling the hospital. Matter of fact, I'm actually friends with one of the nurses that sat by my bedside when I was in a coma. And she couldn't say who she was at the time, but she said she would actually get his calls. And she and he called the hospital every day, every day, a couple times a day. And they basically told him, you know, she's not she's not going to make it. You know, we're, you know, she's not doing good. And every day, I don't know how many of you saw this, but every day he still said, my wife's coming home. My wife's coming home. He yeah. never swayed from that. I And I have friends and people that came to me and they said that he said that 
my wife's coming home. He never swayed, no matter what the doctors told him, no matter what the nurse told him. He said, Trust it, God. Trust it, God. Yes. He, he, he didn't, I mean, he didn't believe the doctors. He didn't, but he didn't listen to them. He prayed every day. I saw it. I saw it. I had, fr I have strangers that come and told me, said, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't know what he, what he did, but he always said, my wife's coming home. Yeah. He never, he never swayed from that. So that's a comparison of what I got, because as soon as I saw that, and that's something that he's, he's probably going to be too proud to mention, No, but <laughs> he's, he, he's because he, because that showed his vulnerability, but as something that, that I, that I feel that I know. So right. that's, that's what I got from a piece of that. Yes. And I remember that, that whole, the whole experience. I remember Patrick reaching out and, you know, he, he was consistent and, and, and that really shows you how important it is to be connected. Your deliverance was based on his faith. You then you were in a place where you couldn't even pray for yourself, but the faith of your husband, God yeah. granted you deliverance and that is a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, anybody else? I just like to say as I viewed this, it, it was really touching. But one of the things that came to me was simply this, that in the scripture is written, these things were written that ye may know, which brings us back to the importance of opening God's word, reading God's word, and, and you can see the things that others are going to do sort of be an example for you to encourage you to stay faithful. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah. I'm going to say what Natoya and Sean challenged us last week, and I kept thinking about their question to us um, on their slide while I was studying this lesson and their question was, does your, does your character reveal that you are growing spiritually and living victoriously? What progress are you making? And I think that was something that each one of us, that's a personal thing. Of course, that's something that we have to answer for ourselves. No one can answer that question for us, but trials come and they develop us spiritually. That is the purpose of them. God allows things to develop our spirit, to strengthen our spirit, man, and to make us stronger and to build our trust and faith in him. Um, and again, like Job said at the top of the thing, it, 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 it's not easy. Nobody said it's easy. We're not trying to promote it being easy because it's not, but it is worth it. And, and, and we serve a God that can do all things, you know? So if we put our trust and faith in him, we can do it through his strength, not our own. Yes. Job's wife tried to do it in her own strength. Okay, so we have to use the strength and, and, and the strength of God to get through through things. Um, Sean, you can go to the victory slide. Okay. Um, in the Bible, victory defined as overcoming and winning struggles and competition against opponent are difficult problem. It can also mean going to a, a disciple advantage over the enemy. And I just wanted to do a, like a, a wrap up real quick. Just remember that before you find yourself in a trial and tribulation, we, the enemy has to get permission. We often forget that because when trials and tribulations come up against us, we want to make a way of escape for ourselves. For instance, somebody don't prosecute you, don't lie on you. We push that person aside. We, first thing we want to say, we don't, we don't want anything to do with that person. That I'm done with that person. Or it comes to the point where somebody from your job comes against you, then you want to find another job. But just remember that before you will be tried, I'm talking about being tried by righteousness sake, not by our own mistakes, that 
he has to get permission to try us. And God has given us everything we need to be victory over that situation. Amen. So just remember that kind of all joy. I know the flesh don't like feeling feeling the way it feels when you go through trials and tribulation. It don't Amen. like it. We don't like long suffering. That's a fruit, but we don't like it. But if we keep our eyes on God and stay in that word, that once when we stand still on his word, victory will come. We'll come up like pure gold. And not only that, we'll go to another level. Then your fruits will develop from the pressure. Then the anointing will come. Yeah. So what's the, the olive? You have to press it, the olive, to get that anointing out of it. So we're going to be tried. This will stand on God's word and watch God move. Yeah. There's no other way that we can go from glory to glory, to level to level, to faith to faith, and to produce these fruits without being tried. Amen. He made the enemy for us to help us to get closer to God. Amen. Stay connected. Yeah. Meditate on your word. Eat that word. Get your script. And allow God to do the rest. Because the more you eat, it's going to spill out. Yes. And Amen. touch other people's lives. And then that's when you become the personality of God. The characteristics of God. Yes. It just automatically flows up because that's all you have in you. Yes. Yeah. When you overeat, it comes out. One in or another, if you overeat your natural food. Yes. So just remember, you have to eat, eat daily. Yes. And I'll be conquerors <laughs> and victorious over the enemy. Stay yes, loved, stay sober. And we love you. Amen. Thank you so much. I know we didn't get um to go read those scriptures that I mentioned earlier, but that's okay. You can read them in your um in your private time. Um, it is 8-11, so we're going to close out. I pray that um, some way, in one way or another, that day two blessed you. You were able to take it um, in, if not relevant today. I pray that God just brings it back up into your spirit when, when you're faced with different trials. Um, and I thank y'all so much for your time. I thank you for listening and being so patient. Um, and I'm going to get... If, if they are all hearts and minds clear, does anybody want to share something? Anything? Fantastic. So, Minister Latoya Dent, if you would please pray us out and thank y'all so much. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I love y'all. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Oh, I love y'all. Y'all did a great job. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Uh, All right, let, let us pray. Dear Heavenly yeah, Father, we just thank you for this time uh, together, Lord. We just ask that you touch us tonight, allow us to have sweet rest, Father God. Help us to be alert of the enemy, uh, Father God. Help us to continue to trust in you when trials come our way. We thank you for our, our teachers tonight. We ask that you bless them, and we ask that you go ahead of us this week, Lord, to continue to, to help us, lead us, and guide us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.